we have now successfully created our developer org account which is purely intended for the purpose of learning and development right yes now it's time for us to understand what are all the different environments that salesforce.com offers and used in real time salesforce.com environments are broadly classified into two production environments development or test environment so what is a production environment Production environment is the actual salesforce.com real time environment that has active paying users accessing business critical information. It has got 100% metadata configuration. Every user accessing the production environment consumes one license. You got to purchase as many licenses as the number of production users, the business critical users. So how do you log into production environment? HTTPS login.salesforce.com It's pretty much on the same lines with the developer edition, right? Even developer edition we logged in using the same URL, login.salesforce.com The same for production environment as well. HTTPS login.salesforce.com Moving on. Moving on to the development or test environments. What is the whole purpose of having this development test environment? It is very strictly used for developing and testing applications. It contains test data which is not business critical because it is not actually used by the end users. So when we talk about this development environment, it can be either sandbox or the developer edition. And sandbox are paid, developer edition is free of cost. At what scenario you use the developer edition and what scenario you use the sandbox? Developer edition, uh, not every project uses that, to be honest. The whole intention of having a developer edition is for uh, making some POCs or for some testing or training or integration with app exchange apps and all these. But uh, definitely not every business, not every project uses a developer edition. Some use, some do not. But a sandbox, yes, mandatory. Every project has got sandbox test environments. And you got to pay for that. And how do you log into sandbox? It is always a test.salesforce.com. And developer edition, we know it is login.salesforce.com. But when we talk about a sandbox environments, there are different types of sandboxes. What are all the different types of sandboxes that Salesforce offers? First comes the developer edition that we very much know. And what is the major restriction in a developer edition? It can hold only a maximum of two users with 5 MB of data. And we know the sign up is free. So we all created our developer org account, right? Yeah. But coming to the sandbox, which is paid, there are four major types of sandbox. First comes the full sandbox. As the name says, it's full sandbox means it is a complete copy of your production org. It includes data as well as metadata. So it is just a photocopy of your production arc. That is a full sandbox. Partial copy sandbox. Partial copy sandbox has a complete metadata configuration, but then it doesn't have 100% of your production data. It just has a sample of your production data. So the data storage is comparatively less it can hold a maximum of 5 GB of data, which is approximately 2.5 million records. Next comes a developer pro sandbox. The data storage is less. It is 1 GB of data, about 0.5 million records. And this copies the customization that is for metadata, but it doesn't hold any production data. It just has got some sample data. And the developer sandbox is on the same lines as developer pro. It copies the metadata configuration. It doesn't copy any of the production data. But the data storage is lesser than a developer pro sandbox. So these are all the different type of environments that Salesforce offers. The production environment which the actual users use and the test environments used by the Salesforce technical team for their development and testing purpose. So again for test environment, it's a sandbox and there are different type of sandbox and it is completely up to your business, up to the project 
to decide on whether they purchase a full sandbox or a partial copy sandbox or a developer pro sandbox or a developer sandbox it is totally up to them because you got to pay for that so every project decides on their requirement and they get it accordingly here is a quick overview of how environments are classified in real time definitely there will be one production environment which holds 100% of your metadata configuration and the actual data which is used by the business users but other than that for development and testing we have multiple lower environments so this is a small instance it is not a hard and fast rule that every project has to have these many instances but in general you have a dev sandbox you have a qa sandbox and you have a staging sandbox so a dev sandbox is pretty much for developments and qa sandbox as the name says for merging the code and for testing purpose and the staging sandbox it is kind of a pre production when it has got the 100% of your production metadata and 100% of your production data so this is a common structure but definitely as i told you it is not a hard and fast rule that every project has to stick on to this it can be different but then we got to note one thing here production how do you access https login.salesforce.com but how do you access staging qa dev sandbox all the sandboxes you access via the same link right what is that https test.salesforce.com so then how do you differentiate whether you want to log into qa sandbox or dev sandbox or staging sandbox it all differs by the username say for example there is a particular person john smith is a user so his production username would be john smith at abc.com whichever company abc.com and when he logs into the sandbox say for example he goes into the url test.salesforce.com it would prompt for a username and password so the username he gives in john.smith at abc.com.qa and he gives his password so what happens it automatically takes him to the qa sandbox it recognizes by the username and salesforce launches the qa sandbox very smart right yes similarly for dev sandbox the username is john smith at abc.com.dev it automatically navigates to the dev sandbox similarly for staging sandbox so in every project that you work in every business there is definitely one production environment and multiple lower environments so the development happens in the dev sandbox and then once the development is done then we migrate the code we deploy the code to qa once the testing is done we deploy the code to staging once that is done we deploy the code to production and there are multiple ways of doing metadata deployments in salesforce which we'll be discussing in the later sessions so hope this gives you a overall idea about the different type of environments that salesforce offers and what are all the different ways of accessing the environments in real time so any questions feel free to post it on the discussion board <music>